guys, and welcome back to Ellie Knows Rocks. Today, we're going to be going over how to use the rock and mineral test kit. For those of you that have purchased the test kit, you're awesome and thank you for your support. And if you haven't purchased it, that's no big deal. You can follow along and learn how to use a rock mineral test kit at home. If you have purchased the rock and mineral test kit on my site, this is what it looks like when it gets to you. Now we're going to go over all of the features in the kit and how to test minerals using the tools that come in the kit. You will need to provide just a few items at home. I recommend you grabbing a copper penny and some white distilled vinegar. Now this is what the test kit comes with. An acid bottle, a hand lens, a steel nail, a magnet, a ceramic street plate, a glass scratch plate, and the baggie, you can use it to put all of the stuff back in or just store your minerals in it. The mineral kit also comes with step-by-step -step instructions, including a few tips and a reference to Mohs hardness scale. Today, I'm going to show you how to use the test kit in order to determine what type of mineral you have. Now, if you have a copper penny available, go ahead and grab that. For some people, you'll probably have white vinegar around your house, and that's going to be good for your acid bottle. For me, I love to use hydrochloric acid, also known as HCl, just because it gives a quicker effervescence for calcareous minerals. So let's fill up the acid bottle. Today, I'm going to be using an old acid bottle of mine that is just a little bit on the funky side. So we're gonna open this up. We're gonna pop off the little tiny top that comes with it. And we're gonna use this acid bottle to put just a little bit in there. Then we're gonna pop this back on so that it's snug and just screw that on tight because you'll be using it later. The hand lens, if you wanna examine it, it's fairly simple. It's actually a really great geology tool. Now the hand lens is made of metal and glass. If for some reason the glass portion feels loose or is getting loose, it has a little ring back here that can be tightened. And you can use a, just a small screwdriver or sometimes your fingernail just to turn it to the right just to make sure that it's snug. And that way there's no jiggling and it's not loose. And you use this to examine your minerals. There is a wrong way and a right way to use a hand lens. This is the wrong way to use a hand lens. That is never going to help you. Even holding it way out here and bringing the mineral closer and further away is never going to work. The proper way to use a hand lens is to have it really snug up close to your eye and then bring the mineral closer to you. Close your opposite eye and catch the light with the mineral so that you can see it pretty close and you can bring the mineral in and out, but the hand lens always stays really close to your eye. That's the proper way to use it. There are a lot of people out there that use a hand lens wrong. And as a geologist, you, you kind of laugh at them a little bit. Now, it's a good idea to examine each mineral under a hand lens. Showing you guys how to use the hand lens earlier. Now you can use it and see the beautiful colors and striations that are natural within the mineral. Examining the mineral underneath of a hand lens can tell you a lot about its crystal habit and other features that you might not see with the naked eye. This really helps in determining what kind of mineral you have. A mineral streak plate is made out of uncoated ceramic. They come in white, or you can also find them in a darker color, like a gunmetal gray or a black, to test for minerals that would have a lighter streak. If a mineral does have a lighter streak, you can always wipe off the streak on your finger and see if it's a white or a cream color. Now let's scratch a few minerals to see how this works.
See how each mineral has its own individual street color? This is the mineral in, in its powdered form and its most purest form for you to see what color the mineral actually is. Sometimes minerals reflect and refract light, causing them to look a different color than they truly are. Scratching it on a streak plate will actually help you see the mineral's true streak color and help you identify that mineral later. A mineral's hardness can be determined by several different tools. We can use our fingernails, which are about a two to a 2.5. A copper penny, which is about a 3.2 to 3.5 hardness. A glass plate, which is about a 5.5 hardness. And a steel nail, which is about a 6.5 hardness. Then the streak plate, which is a seven. The streak plate will scratch glass and quartz will actually scratch the streak plate. Now let's observe what I'm talking about. Let's use the piece of glass first. And we're gonna use different minerals on it. Nothing happens. Ooh, this is harder than a 5.5. This is softer. This guy. This is softer. This is definitely going to be softer. However, the scratch will scratch this mineral. And then this guy definitely scratches the glass plate. So let's try the penny. Penny will definitely scratch this, leaving some of the residue on the penny. Now, what's gonna happen here is the penny copper part of it is gonna be left on the mineral. You can see how it has that little bit of shiny copperness on it. That's because this is actually scratching the penny. Now let's see about this guy. So it looks like the penny is actually scratching this, which means this is between a three and 3.5. And this guy, of course, the penny is just gonna leave its residue. So this is scratching the penny. Let's look at the steel nail. Mm, the steel nail will scratch this mineral. And we know that the steel nail is definitely gonna scratch this because this is only about a three-ish or 3.5. We've already scratched them on the streak plate. So we know which ones will leave a streak on the streak plate, which was pretty much all of them. So that also tells us a lot of information about how hard each one of them is. And you can match up that hardness number on Mohs hardness scale. Mohs hardness scale shows the exact minerals that fall on the scale from one to 10. And each mineral has a very specific hardness. The best way to look up a mineral's hardness is to either look it up in a book or do a simple Google search. We're going to get a lot closer and we're gonna start using the acid on each one of the minerals to see if any of them react. Nope. Nothing there. Nope. Now that one really reacts. That's a carbonate mineral. This test is using the magnet. Now, all you do is run the magnet over the mineral to see if it picks it up. If nothing happens, well, then there's nothing magnetic within the mineral. The magnet works a lot with things that have a lot of black sand a lot of magnetite and iron in them. So it's not going to work for every mineral, but the magnet is extremely useful, especially if you think you have something like an iron stone or a meteorite. This method of rock identification has been around for an extreme amount of time and works quite accurately when done right. Now with all the information that you've gathered, by using these tools, you can figure out what type of mineral or rock that you have. I hope you guys learned something from this small tutorial about how to use a mineral test kit. Now, you can purchase these from wherever you like. I also have them on my website. I've put them together out of the materials that I use personally. So I found the materials that I wanted to use and so I'm providing them to you guys. So I hope you enjoy them. And if not, you can totally find them somewhere else.
Thank you all so much for being part of my adventure and for hanging out with me, and I'll see you all later.